Happy Saturday morning, everybody. Junkyard here. I'm gonna go over trying to find the source of a hydraulic leak. Um, there's a little bit of an art to it. Sometimes it's blatantly obvious when you have a hose rupture or something like that. You can see the oil spraying and all that. That's pretty easy. But when you have what is not a massive leak, but making a mess, sometimes it's a little more challenging to find it. This particular area is not hard to get to. It's a drive motor on a track machine, so it takes cover off. You can sit down, you can look. Sometimes in the belly of these rigs or a skid steer or something, it's tough. Sometimes you spend a lot of time cleaning just to be able to find the source of the oil. So, pulled the cover off. You can see the pile of dirt I cleaned out of there. And so, it's not rocket science to find the probable source before you actually go to the point of running the machine to test for it. So, we can clearly see at the top there's we don't have any leaks there okay back here it's dry it's not leaking there um, you got to look like down in here where that let me get my finger this hose that was caked full of crap when you look for leaks on hoses you have to think about when that hose pressures up it moves you know and depending on how it's held captive it might slide it might curve more or relax more so Think about what's going on when the operator's applying whatever control it is that you're looking for the leak. So, basically, you start at the lowest point and work your way up. So, obviously, the lowest point here would be down in here. So, I cleaned all that crap out. We, we have a clear path of oil here. It goes up the block. It's not leaking up here that it looks oily, but it's dry But what makes me think the leak is over here is the fact that that Is pretty clean So I feel like Let's see if you can see better My lights helping or hurting Somewhere in this vicinity is where our leak is. I mean right Right there. It's really clean. I don't know if you can see it So I'm thinking we probably just got an o-ring it's leaking so I will be able to test what I do to test I'll show you that in a second um, sometimes it's challenging by yourself so what I will do is I will clean that whole area up and I'll put a rock bar in the track there where I can stall the track out and I may not even need to do that I may be able to fire it up and it might leak but I don't think that would be the case on a drive motor like this but you, ha you have to think about all the things that are going on on whatever circuit you're trying to find the leak. On this, if you had a, if you, the cover was on and this thing was just hemorrhaging oil, it's going to be one of these two bigger lines because that's the most flow and pressure to your drive motor. If it's leaking but it's not terrible, it could be the case drain line, it could be the brake line, it could be the, uh, I don't know if there's what would the correct term for those would be reliefs or maybe counterbalance valves or cushions. I don't know. But you have to make yourself a drop of hydraulic oil and say, if I was going to find a leak, where would I go? It's not that simple. But, um, so that's what we're going to find. I, like I said, I'm pretty confident it's right in there just because that's where the path of oil I mean, you can see down on the bottom of the block there. It's pretty clean. It's usually a pretty good sign. But I'll clean it up and make it leak. And if I can figure out a way to make it leak and film it, I'll do that. But that's where we're at on this deal. I got a few other little things to do to this rig, but this was the main thing. And uh, a lot of times when you have work to do on a a machine let's say you have a really long list and the rig's got to go to work do it like triage look at the list and go what has to be done what do i need to fix for this rig to go to work what will prevent it from functioning what will prevent it from the safety guy 
signing off on it or it breaking down in the bottom of a 50 foot slurry hole and you're just tea totally foobard and just work your way down the list that's sometimes that's what i have to do sometimes i cannot get everything done and i have to tell the operator i have to tell the owner i, I can't i don't have the time so as a mechanic especially when you get to the point where you're kind of the source of all things mechanical and all things maintenance related you know you got to kind of learn how to prioritize on a rig or, or possibly multiple rigs I have to do that on a regular basis I have to look at okay what what needs to be done what can I get done in the a lot of time what parts do I need to order first you know what can I maybe field fix or temporarily you know band-aid it so to speak so the guys can finish you know like right now this rig needs to be done I've got a rig over in Arkansas the air conditioner needs to be fixed I've got a rig up in Kansas it was acting up I walked a guy through diagnosing it and I'm hoping that we can remedy it Monday morning before it ships to another job because because right now my schedule does not allow me time to go look at it because I have a rig to move Monday We've got another rig to move in Tulsa Tuesday that's a, a big rig, so there's some teardown and some mobilization time there. It's not just as simple as throwing it on the trailer. So, you just gotta, don't get hectic, don't get fired up, don't let them panic, and with them being the operator or the owner or the customer, if you don't work for one specific company, don't let them throw you off, off your game. Just make your diagnosis be confident and you know I had that happen a few days ago I had to drive 10 hours round trip to do 15 minutes worth of work and I knew what the problem was um, some repairs have been made by somebody else and it wasn't tested and by the symptoms I was confident of the problem but they were wanting to send up extra this and extra that and you got to understand the systems you're working on you got to know how they work to be effective as a technician it doesn't matter if it's heavy equipment doesn't matter if it's cars it doesn't matter if it's freaking refrigerators whatever it is just be the best you can be at it learn it i mean i eat sleep and breathe this shit to the detriment of a lot of other things and the frustration of my children and the woman in my life and all that but that's just what i like to do so whatever you're going to work on whether even if you're not it doesn't matter if you're a mechanic or not. If you want to be a carpenter or a plumber or a bicycle repairman or whatever you choose to do, be the best you can possibly be at it. There's no matter, even if, I fail all the time. I tear shit up all the time. That just comes with the territory. I was told a long, long time ago, if you ain't fucking something up, you ain't getting nothing done. It's gonna happen. But damn it, I try every time. And it, it it's a great feeling when you make a repair and things go great and it's like a kick in the nuts when you make a repair and it fails and you're gonna have comebacks it's just, it's just gonna happen but you'll learn over time to be um, as thorough as possible and every every mechanic has their own little way of organization they have their own way of checking things smartphones have made the job exponentially easier because you can take pictures as you disassemble stuff you can take video you can make notes, you can search an ungodly amount of information on the internet. So it, when I started, hell, I didn't even have a, well, I think I'd just gotten a cell phone when I started turning wrenches in the late 90s. So, um, we need more people in the trades, plain and simple, every trade. Welders, carpenters, plumbers, you name it, framers, mechanics, we just need them. It's gotten to be where college educated people, while necessary for a lot of professions, I'm not dogging any college educated people. There's just as profitable and fulfilling careers in other areas and people need to do it. So but I'm gonna clean this up and I will, uh, I don't know how to edit and splice videos. So I'll just post another video on where the leak was and get into showing you that quick repair. I'm sure it's an O-ring or a, uh, some of these have British parallel pipe fittings and they have funky little washers and O-rings and stuff. So we'll see what that comes up.
I'll be back soon. Have a good day.